Thrion here. I know I'm happy to be back. Uh, I've been ill for a while. I had a ear infection, an ear, ear infection, and sinus infection that got way out of hand. Or I mean, I was basically bedridden over the holidays until I started getting better towards the end. Uh, I'm back with West Beams uh, Langen Sacks. This is a specialized blade. He asked me what we wanted him to make for us to try on the channel. He wanted us to test one of his, his saxes or fine blades out. He makes all types of fine blades. You can look him up online. I'm sure we'll have a link down below too and in the description uh, of how to look up his blades. If you'd like to talk to him, he can actually create the blade for you however you want it. Uh, he sends pictures to you as he actually forges the blade step by step. So, I mean, it is handmade, handcrafted. It's got a beautiful handle. We've tested this blade before. The cutting power was extreme for a blade this length. The blade's about 1L long, uh, which means it's from the tip of your uh, fingertips to your elbow which is exact dimensions as described in King Godfrey's time uh, when uh, Homganga had got to its most strictest rules. It started off as Ain Viggy, then to the island, when you used to go to an island and you'd fight on this little island and they'd drop you off until somebody killed the other. Uh, it, it, it progressed to a point where it had so many rules that you took turns throwing blows by flipping a coin. Uh, one spot of blood on the mat, it was till first blood, was pretty much the end of the match unless you tried to buy yourself back in. Uh, and this blade is pretty much that type of blade. This is also the type of sax you would hear about in, in legend that someone pref would prefer with their shield over an actual sword or a longer sword. Uh, the, the classical Viking Age sword. Some people actually use blades like this. But this blade has all the mass and heft, as you've seen in the other video. Uh, this is not a, a uh, sword fencing type sword. I mean, it's, it's a type of blade that's like a sword, but it's not would not be used for blade fencing. You wouldn't be out there trying to fence with just the blade. I suppose you could if you got down to that and you had to. It'd be paired with a shield. And the mass of it would be used much like a, a uh, machete type action or a, a axe or let's say a uh, falchion because it's very much like a falchion. With a straight edge, I'm assuming it's going to cut very good against cloth armors. With a mass, I think it'll do good against anything like mail. I think it would tear shields up, especially the lighter weight shields in home Ganga. You know, where they actually pounded on each other's shield trying to destroy the other man's shield because he only had a limited number of shields, only three that he could call upon. When he was out of shields, he was pretty much at your mercy because you stood in a small ring. So I'm going to test that out today, and as promised, we're going to try to go to do a gel head as well because West Beam absolutely wanted to see a gel head. And we made a special one today, an extra tough one because of uh, the nature of this blade. I love the blade. Uh, West Beam is going to be sending a pickup for this blade because he actually sent it to us just to try out. This wasn't something he sent to us as, here, take this blade and, you know, it's yours. He sent it to us saying, well, he'll give us a reduced price or at least let us test it and then he would send a pickup and get it back. I'd really like to keep it, uh, but at the moment uh, we have a camera coming in, a very nice camera. It's a $1,400 camera. Uh, we got a deal on it and that's what we spent our money towards that we get from y'all is to get a new camera that will help us out of the channel. And I'm sad to say that I would, if I had the money, he wants 150, I believe, I would pay him outright and keep this blade. It's a beautiful blade. But I can't wait to see today what it does. Um, I'm expecting some very impressive performance. I really am, really am. So uh, let's get out there without further ado and get this going. All right, we're here with our famous Gambison test. And why, during the Viking Age, when this would have been used in home ganga and so on, somebody might have been wearing multiple layers of cloth due to the cold weather. They wore a lot of linens. This is a linen sack, tightly woven, coarse tightly woven, and it was sent to us by Andreas Knoll. Uh, but we're going to use this 24 layers, which is probably more than anything that the, uh, the early Scandinavians would have had on as armor, because they could have possibly worn cloth armor as well. It's very common, uh, as we've always been uh, uh, telling everybody that it's been used since the beginning of time. Cloth is probably one of the first armors. We're gonna go ahead and see if this sax, this Langen sax, which from a sax, can cut through the actual uh, gambus. And this is the same as Scalagram used on his channel. I believe Andrew Snowles provided those as well when he tested uh, spear thrust. This is 24 layers, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try with this straight edge, and we've already tried sax before against Gambison, and see that they're smaller blades normally, the others were used, and not as heavy as this one and they perform excellently by cutting against heavy layers of cloth. This is a lot of cloth, it's extreme, and I'm gonna hit the angle we always use. You wouldn't normally hit it this way because it won't cut through that way. 
we're going to go ahead and hit with a tip shot. I think the straight edge and with the way the blade's made, it's going to perform extremely well. I will be using a cast style blow, the most energy possible, and hitting with a tip shot. So we'll see what happens. Nothing. This type of blade is almost like using a uh, Faust or something, which we'll be testing all over the future. We have received one. Uh, it's nothing to claw off like this. With the tip shot, if we were to hit it any other way, it would not have gone through. But with that type of, of cast blow and using the very tip of this, the shape is perfect. Look at how many layers it cut through. All right, we have uh, our shield here, a Skjelder. Uh, this is not what I would consider a war shield or a V scout. It's not a, it's, this is not something that's so durable and heavy. This is a lighter shield, probably very much like they describe in the stories of the home ganga. We're going to go ahead and try right now, and I'm going to hit on an edge that's just covered in linens, a, a couple of layers, not much, and see how deep it cuts into the shield. Now, we're going with the advantage of having the grain going this way, you can see it. But, I mean, you might have to go in cross grain. But we'll try it this way and just see how well it chops into the shield. You might not necessarily want to do this edge shot because you might get stuck in there or he might take advantage of you with it. But we're just going to see how well it does. And as you see, I had the shield where it could give and move. Look at that cut. That literally cut it and stuck in. Can I remove it? Not easily. So, like I said, this might not be the best way to destroy this type of shield. That could get me, uh, cost me the whole match there. But, if you look at that cleft, that is unbelievable. From a small blade like this, the kind of damage to the shield, this is the proper thickness. It's about a quarter inch thick, hard wood grain going this way, and we've actually got it covered properly. Let's go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try a different shot. I will actually throw, like if you were trying to damage the shield and split it up and hopefully not get it stuck in it. We actually went clean through the shield, it busted out the back side. I will go ahead and hit it again. Ugh! Came out quite easily there, but look at what we did to the shield. This is like all the way through. You can see it's just shattered, destroyed. I can see how if you kept doing this, the shield would slowly whittle down and you would destroy the shield. These are actually cutting through the shield, like the entire shield length. When I cut, the tip of this slices clean through, especially with the tip shots. I think that's much more advantageous to try to destroy the shield without getting it stuck, because I can actually retrieve that. This is probably very much what it looked like as they beat each other's shield to, to pulp. As they actually knocked pieces out and destroyed it. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, wow. Yes, and I could see how a man could get wounded through this. So, this is making sense to me. If this shield was about this type of construction, I would need to call for one soon. As I kept doing damage to this shield back and forth and them doing damage to mine, Somebody would have to call a hole and get a new shield from the uh, whoever was running the match. Now, this blade would definitely do what it needs to do historically. Beautiful cuts. I am highly, highly impressed. We've trashed the shield already with it. The shield, I mean, could still function, but much more of that wouldn't last long. You'd need another shield. All right, we're here as promised with our analog ballistics gel head. And just like we promised Wes Bean, he absolutely wanted to see his Langen sacks. Uh, tested on one of these because he says that a lot of people who have him fashion blades for them have actually tested them on uh, deer carcasses and stuff and cut them in half. So I have no doubt by the weight of this blade and the way it feels and how sharp it is and how it's performed before in the previous video, if y'all want to check that out, uh, I think it's going to do very, very well. But as usual, instead of doing some really light cut where we just come in and you know, like you would in a blade fencing situation, which this blade's clearly not made for that. It doesn't have a cross guard for that. It'd be used with a shield for the use for combat, and it surely would be the length and weight that it is. Uh, we're going to come in with a full cast blow, and uh, I'm going to see how much damage we can do to one of these heads. I think with the mass behind this and the way it's designed, 
that a straight overhead cast blow, which means I give it all the acceleration I can by throwing the blade out in full range of motion, like you would do with a shield, uh, will do the most damage. So that's what we will try to start off with. I'm standing like if I had a shield, letting the blade do the work. That is impressive. For a one-handed blade, the way it split the skull and the way it cleft into it, the skull is almost completely in half, and you can see the blood just gushing. I'm extremely impressed. The weight behind this, it's almost like using a cudgel or something, like like a, a axe. I mean, it's just, you can see it. It would tear a shield up. That is just horrible. It actually shattered bone because of the width of this. If you look at the back on it, as it cut in, it shattered the actual bone due to the shape and the width as it, it bronze into a back blade, back sword. Beautiful. All right, that did exceptionally well. I'm gonna try an offside shot. I'm gonna come in here cutting for this side of the head with full power and see how it cuts into the skull and what kind of damage it does. I was very impressed with that first, first blow. Again, like if I had a shield here, I'll be doing it in this manner. Ah! Oof, blood in the face and everything. Looks like we came in and took that part of the skull completely clean off. And I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, I could. I noticed that as it came in, it just lifted it right off. It looks like we have a piece over here. Oh. Aimed a little bit higher than I expected. I was going to come in a little bit lower, but we still got it right there and just turned it clean off. Alright, you might not be in a total opportune moment to do this, but if you could come in and hit the guy straight across the face, I'm just curious what this will do. This kind of blade with this mass, I think it'll be pretty impressive. I'm going to come in like if I just gave it everything I had and try to cut completely through and see what happens. Oh! See, His head spun around like the little girl on Exorcist. Oh, yeah. We went completely through this cheek. It's shattered. This bone is completely shattered here and separated. It went all the way in. Yes, that's all the way into our uh, bottom of our uh, skull, chopped into it and somewhat into the spine, cut into this part of the jaw here, our facial structure. But this one is just totally destroyed. This cut is all the way in. It's only stopping because it's hitting the actual skull itself and cutting into it, clefting into it. Well, that much ballistic gelatin and this bone here, that's extremely impressive. That face is destroyed. Look at the opening. Not a lot of blood, but I mean, that's a lot of flesh to be going through right there. There's nothing to bleed in this one. I'm sure your real opponent would be gushing blood. All right, that spun his head clean around. So now we've got him straight up like he was again. I've turned it back around. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a full decap. This kind of hard with the shoulder in the way and a shorter blade. And I'm gonna try to come straight through the spine and I'm just gonna step into it and give it everything I got to see if we can take his head clean off. I think this blade can do it. If any blade this length that's one-handed could do it, this blade could do it. Oh! A little high. A little high. So afraid of hitting this here. I took his jaw both through both bones clean off and I made it all the way into the spine but didn't quite go through. The reason why is because we went through these two pieces of bone in the jaw here. We went through a lot of heavy ballistic gelatin and he is bleeding from his spine. It's cracked into his spine. You, you cut a big old, a big old Joker smile in his face. Oh like, yeah, he look, he looks like the Joker. He's, I don't know if he'd really be smiling, but it looks like our, uh, our, our Evor uh, head is smiling at the moment. Nasty, right, right, right below the lip, just barely below the lip, straight through the jaw. I am impressed. Yes, it went through the bone on both sides, not just like it did at the top. It went through both sides. That is impressive and shattering more bone in the actual jaw. 
That would have knocked all your teeth out. That would have went, that would have went to the spine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try that decap again. I was extremely impressed with what it did with the jaw and going into the spine. And it was almost a decap from there because we actually hit the spine and cut into it. I'm going to do it from this angle. And the reason why, this is a wooden pell that we used to hold our heads on. And I'm sorry, there's something about self-consciously you do not want to bust your knuckles on a piece of wood. So I kind of aimed a little high. Let's go ahead and we'll try it again. I'm going to step in here and I'm going to cut and I think we'll get a clean decap. I'm really helpful. Uh, yo! That is a clean decap. We've got our neck piece here. What happened is the actual blow, like I said, as wide as this blade becomes because it's a back sword, it gets really thick in the back. We've shattered our spine and the spine totally shattered which caused this effect. That's why we lost the bottom half where I cut at. I tried to make dang sure that this time I did not hit the jaw. I wanted to see what it did to the actual neck itself. So we got it cleaned through. And as usual, as the head's kicking off, we have some tearing. Let's check out that head. We've got some more blood here. And yeah, I would say that is a fairly clean decap. We went clean through shattered the spine and we just have some flesh tearing here which might have been a little flesh flap as the head flopped over but i doubt it i think it would have sliced clean through if this was a real head ballistic gel still behaves a little differently than true uh, flesh we said there's no skin flaps <laughs> beautiful that i'm that this tells me that this blade yes i believe it so some uh, small deer carcasses or deer carcasses it sliced them in half i, I totally believe that beautiful we should really thank oh west, west bean thank you again uh the blade performed exactly like you said it would uh the damage i'm getting here i mean this is this is equivalent to a lot of uh, hand and a half swords lighter hand and a half swords i mean the the mass behind it and it being a lot like the old legendary blades that were used later century for home ganga when they had to go to shorter lengths and they still needed mass and power to destroy shields because they had a three shield minimum it performs just like that this is beautiful. The damage here, I mean, I could see it going through mail. Somebody's wearing mail with padding and no helmer, no helm. Uh, yeah, it would, it would shatter a skull. I can, I can definitely tell you that you could, you could kill the man through his mail. Uh, this, this is a very good blade. I mean, I, I think it performs excellently. It's got a great edge and I love the shape and design. Uh, I really wish we could keep it, like I've said before. Uh, but I mean, he is wanting it back. He's gonna send a pickup on the blade. He says someone else is actually interested in this specific blade. Uh, he, he had offered it to us for a uh, reduced price of 150 but it looks like we probably are going to have to give it up. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure and like and subscribe uh, down below. Uh, be sure and go by our uh, YouTube uh, page, which on our, our, not YouTube page, but our uh, Facebook page, excuse me there, Facebook page, uh, Thane Thran, uh, uh, YouTube Boat Crew. Uh, is our private group and then our thread at Elgrim's Willow Remembrance is our like page on Facebook. You can ask to be a member of the private group or you can go ahead and uh, just go to our like page and like us there and we share a lot of stuff there as well. But if you really want to get in the circle and you want to be able to talk to other people who know a lot about different subjects and topics, that even stuff that we don't know about ourselves, uh, there are specialists in different areas and in history, be sure and go to the uh, closed group, our Thane Thran YouTube boat crew. Uh, you can help us out on Patreon as well at www Patreon. Uh, dot com slash thrand uh, you can go by there and make monthly donations if you'd like or just cut it off after the first month if you just want to make a one-time donation or if you just want to make sure that you make a one-time donation you can go to our paypal site which is thane thrand uh, at yahoo.com is the paypal id if you'd like to contact us be sure and contact us at thane thrand at gmail.com that's our actual email that we watch more avidly if you want us to try some of your uh, arms or armor that you construct yourself or if you have a company or something like that or like to make donations to us that are actual physical donations or stuff you'd like to see tried on the channel like Wes Beam has done. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed everything and Farvel!